In this video, we're going to look at Frontline. And Frontline is an oil and gas midstream company. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. What I do in my videos is I run my discounted cash flow model to figure out the real value of a company's stock. And I look at the financial ratios of the company and compare them to their competitors. And I do this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. So let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $1.48 billion. And let's see what they're trading at. They're trading at $749. And let's get the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today. That's exactly what I'm doing in this video. And we also need the net income, which is a profit and loss. And that's on the income statement. And I'm gonna pull four years of that and put it into the model. And then we're gonna get the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And we wanna take a look at the numbers to make sure they look okay. They have a lot of negatives. They have negative free cash flow three of the four years. So they were spending more money than they generated. Hopefully we can get a good value for the company. Let's look at the capital structure so we know what discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. So the interest they pay in their debt is $95 million. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liabilities section. Current debt of $439 million, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $1.2 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. And they pay 5.5% interest on their debt. And they don't pay taxes. Oil companies pay a lot less in taxes compared to other companies. They can defer taxes, which is a big advantage that they have. The 2017 tax cuts and job cuts helped oil companies further reduce their tax rate. The oil and gas industry is subsidized, so they receive a lot of funding as well. Let's figure out the cost of equity. We need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is. And they have a really low beta of 0.26, so the stock doesn't move too much. Let's go back to their balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are mainly cash accounts, receivables, and inventory. And that's $448 million. And we need current liabilities, which are the debts and payables that are due within 12 months. That's $848 million. And the equity, that's assets minus liabilities. That's $1.5 billion. And we also need their EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. On the income statement, that's called operating income. And that's what they generate before paying interest on its debt and before paying taxes. That's $234 million. Let's look at the capital structure. The cost of debt is 5.5% and they have 53% debt. The cost of equity is 4.3% and they have 47% equity. So the weighted average cost of capital is 5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value for the company of $2.5 billion. We divide that by 198 million shares. And we calculate an intrinsic stock price of $13. It's trading at $7.50, so it's trading at a 42% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. They're even higher, they're at $14. So in both cases, we're saying the company is a strong buy. It seemed like the stock peaked around $16, $17 five years ago, and it hit about $13 a few months ago, but it's been cut in half since then. Lots of investors are really concerned about investing in oil and gas companies due to the really low prices per barrel of oil. 
that's really affecting these companies' revenue. Let's look at the financial ratios to get more information. They have a really good PE of 10.6, that's price of stock, which is 750 over earnings per share, 71 cents. To get earnings per share, that's net income, 140 million divided by shares outstanding. And remember, net income is the bottom of the income statement. It's the profit after paying all your expenses. A PE under 15 is considered a good value, but you always want to compare it to similar companies. They also have a good price to sales ratio 1.5. That's price to stock over sales per share. And to get sales per share, that's just revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, so that's good, 1.5. They have a good price to book ratio of 1, that's price of stock over book value per share. And book value per share is equity, and equity is your assets minus liabilities on your balance sheet, and you divide that number by shares outstanding. This ratio implies that the book value on their balance sheet is worth more than the stock price, so you're really taking no risk when investing in this company, if you feel the information on the balance sheet is 100% accurate, that is. Let's look at their current ratio, 0.5, so that's not good. They can't cover their current liabilities, so either they take on more debt or they need to bring in more revenue. Their ROE is kind of low at 9%. That's net income of $140 million over equity. I like to see 20% or higher for this ratio. They can cover their interest payments two and a half times, so that's okay. That's EBIT, $234 million over interest expense, $94 million. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. So I've done a video on Embridge, which is a Canadian company, MPLX, One Oak, and Plains. All of these companies do the same thing Frontline does. And if Frontline's number is in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're a little better than the average in PE, a little worse than the average in price of sales. They have the best price to book of the companies. They have the worst current ratio of the companies. Their ROE is lower than average. Their debt is below average. And they're the smallest company of the bunch. So let me know what you think about this company and what you think about the industry. Thanks for watching.